Welcome to this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade Podcast, where we look forward to shaving every day. Welcome to episode 143 of the podcast. My name is Rick DeWeese. I'll be your host this week. Okay, let me tell you about Scout Camp, because I've been off a couple of weeks here, and uh, one of the things that I did was, uh, well, we went to Scout Camp, so I'll tell you about that a little bit. Boot laces. Yeah, uh, an interesting topic, especially if you have leather boots with uh, with leather laces. I'll tell you what my experience has been and, well, what I did about it. Finding things in the wild. Yeah, isn't it fun? I Just really fun to go out, go into an antique shop and find razors that are in good shape and uh, be able to bring them home and give them some loving attention and uh, get them at a good price. Get them back into the hands of somebody who's going to use them as a tool and as a as a, a prized possession. Yeah, good stuff. Um, talk about the shave of the day. In fact, shave of the day with one of the finds, well, that I found in the wild. <laughs> and uh, after that, you know, I, I talk about uh, one of the aftershaves that I have used with the shave of the day. And I'll talk about my experience with that aftershave. And then finally, I'll finish up with uh, what I just ended up getting a couple of days ago, which is an Ozark tumbler. No, it's not a Yeti, but it's it's actually uh, almost identical and uh, just as good <laughs> at about a quarter of the cost. So uh, I'll tell you all about that. Anyhow, that's the show this week. Um, kind of uh, kind of sparse in the shaves of the day, but uh, once we get to the shave of the day segment, I'll tell you why. Um, it's just been a great time being off and just kind of uh, doing the other stuff that I needed to do. But uh, anyhow, we're back in action, and uh, that's the show this week. So let's get on with this thing. Well, summer camp this year with the Boy Scouts was an was a an absolute success. Uh, there can be no other way to describe it other than it was great. <laughs> it was hot. It was humid. It rained and thundered and lightning and everything else on a couple of days. But by gosh, it was great. Okay, so some of the highlights. First off, we went up there and set up the uh, the radio station that we. Uh, set up on an annual basis at our particular campsite and uh, proceeded to make contacts and have a good time and get some guys enthused about amateur radio, had uh, had a couple guys come up and ask about the radio station, had one uh, scout leader who had uh, received a uh, her technician's license. However, you know, she'd, she'd gone to the class, she'd gotten her technician's license, she'd never spoken on a radio, ever. And I'm thinking, well, we got to fix that. So I immediately handed her my handheld and had her talk to my partner up at the uh, up at our campsite. And so, okay, now you've talked on a radio. <laughs> We've gotten that out of the way. <laughs> now let's go have some fun. Um, but yeah, she had never talked on a radio, which I found uh, well rather amazing. But you know, I understand it. It's a shame, but uh, yeah. So, in fact, the other thing that happened on the amateur radio front is that for the first time, our camp, our scout camp, offered the radio merit badge. And the most exciting reason or thing about the radio merit badge is that the young man who was uh, helping instruct the radio merit badge, uh, one of the counselors at the camp, um, we had... Me and my uh, my assistant scoutmaster, who is also an amateur radio operator, had run into him, um, what was it, four or five years ago when he first uh, came to camp as a counselor and got to talking to him about amateur radio and showed a lot of enthusiasm for amateur radio. And from that, he decided he was going to go and get his general license. And then from there... He decided that he was going to set up a uh, a radio merit badge class, and so the the spark, I guess, that we started four or five years ago, led to the radio merit badge being offered this year. And in fact, I helped teach some of that radio merit badge, and had a good time doing it. So great time was had by all. In addition to that, one of my scouts 
uh, finished up all the requirements. He had done his Eagle project, uh, what, about a month before camp, and uh, he had finished up all the uh, the requirements for the last merit badge that he needed for Eagle. All his paperwork is now in. All the records are now straight. All he needs left is a rate is a uh, an Eagle Board of Review, which is a good thing because, well, yes, he did in fact wait until the last minute. <laughs> his birthday is like today or tomorrow. <laughs> That's okay. If you do all the work, if you do all the paperwork, all the merit badges, and everything else before your 18th birthday. You can have a board of review after your 18th birthday and still be fine. Um, and, and he's done that. So, yes, he waited until the last minute. But at the same time, I'm really proud of him because this is a boy who walked in to my scout troop two and a half years ago, said, I want to be a scout and I'm going to make Eagle. <laughs> and in two and a half years, which is the just about the absolute minimum that you can do it in, well, he did it. <laughs> uh, he is also a, uh, I, I told him he was also my senior patrol leader this uh, this last year, who is my uh, my head scout, essentially. And I told him it was a good thing he got that out of the way because, well, this coming year in the fall, uh, he will be a senior at the high school, and he is also the cadet commander of the junior ROTC uh, command over there. So uh, he's got his hands full. He's got a lot on the ball, and uh, he told me he wants to come back, if at all possible, after he turned 18 as an assistant scoutmaster with the troop, and I gladly accepted that offer because, uh, yeah, good stuff. He's trying to get in the Naval Academy. I kind of think he'll make it. Anyhow, so that was great. Um, had another boy that uh, that got inducted into the Order of the Arrow, which is the uh, kind of the National Honor Society for Scouting, and uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, had a good bit of adult participation within my troop. The troop behaved well, and something happened this year that has well, let's see. I want to say as long as I've been scoutmaster. Uh, has never happened. We actually went the whole scout camp without anybody falling out due to dehydration, due to lack of water and fluid consumption in the heat and humidity of the upstate of South Carolina, which is a first. Usually we have one. Now, they're usually younger scouts because, quite honestly, they're not used to it. They've never done anything like that. And, you know, they're used to going back into air-conditioned comfort and everything, and they're not used to drinking the amount of fluids that is necessary to keep your yourself going in that environment. And so uh, usually we have one that, that falls out. And this year, well, we didn't have any. And uh, you want to talk about impressed. Wow. <laughs> Anyhow, Scout Camp was absolutely exceptional. Ah, uh, bootlaces. <laughs> okay, kind of a weird subject, but an interesting one nonetheless. So, if you don't know this already, I have a pair of leather boots. And uh, they're a nice pair of leather boots. In fact, they're the perfect boots for me. Um, and I do enjoy them so very, very much. Now, as part of that leather boot... Well, they also carry leather laces, or at least they did. Um, but there's a problem with leather laces. Leather laces eventually break. And uh, it's interesting how they do that as well. At least I have a theory on this. I may be completely, well, all wet, but <laughs> I do have a theory. So what ends up happening, or at least what happened to me, and what appears to have happened, um, is I spent a couple of days outside at scout camp where it was wet, where it was humid, where it was moist, and the leather in my boots, and especially the leather in my 
in, in my laces absorbed that moisture. And in absorbing that moisture, it allowed the leather in the laces to stretch. And in stretching, it got thin. And in getting thin, it got weak. And lo and behold, that's where it broke. And so if there was any uh, abrasions or anything like that in the laces, well, snap. And in fact, that's exactly what happened on the third day of camp this year. Uh, my leather laces snapped. The thing that was interesting, uh, that was actually, in fact, curious, was that my laces snapped on each boot in the same place. <laughs> so as one person put it, um, at least I am consistent in my wear patterns. <laughs> Anyhow, I had uh, kind of foreseen, if you will, uh, that eventuality, and I had bought some synthetic laces. I think they're nylon. I, I may be wrong. They may be polyester. But uh, some synthetic laces that are now in my boots. The nice thing about these is that, well, first off, they're uh, a lot of people use 550 cord, you know, paracord. But the outer sheath on uh, on the 550 cord is very uh, fine. And in fact, it's designed that way so that it won't snag or hang or anything else while the lines are potentially rubbing against one another. And the problem that that uh, creates is that oftentimes the... Uh, when you tie a bow or a knot in those laces, well, it doesn't really stay. So, the synthetic laces that I have have a much uh, larger weave, if you will, on the outer sheath of the uh, of the lace. And in fact, it may be the whole lace. I, I don't think there's anything on the interior of the lace. At least it didn't look like that. It looked like a, a solid material all the way through, which is okay. Um... Now, the thing that's nice about them is that once I got them in my boots and uh, laced my boots up, I was then able to tie them and, uh, and put heat shrink tubing, which was supplied by the lace maker, as a matter of fact, uh, put heat shrink tubing on the, uh, on the lace, shrink it down, cut the, uh, cut the lace at the appropriate length, and then uh, seal the lace with, uh, with heat and fire. Um, so all in all, not a bad little package, and I get the exact length that I desire, need, etc. In something that, well, won't uh, won't break due to getting wet. Now it will probably abrade and wear over time and everything else, but at least it appears at this juncture that it's not going to suffer the same fate as the leather. And again, I will theorize that the leather laces that broke, on the multiple occasions that they broke, uh, broke because they got too wet. And then they stretched and were pulled, got thin, and snapped. That's the only mechanism that I can see. I mean, leather laces, by and large, are made out of fairly thick leather, fairly stiff leather. Um, and the only way that I can see of avoiding the eventuality is by coating them with, I don't know, something like Obanoffs or something like that to keep as much moisture as possible out of the leather. And in fact, these had been previously coated with Obanoffs, but it had been a while. Now, I will say that the leather laces lasted about a year, and uh, I do uh, wear my boots well, a, a pretty decent amount, not all the time, but a pretty decent amount. But I that would lead me to believe that an average pair of boot laces would probably last about three months of continuous and constant wear before they'd have to, you know, be replaced. And to me, that's just a bit shy. Now, granted, it's... Uh, Maybe okay for some, but for me, yeah, I'm thinking I need a little bit more life out of my boots, uh, or out of my boot laces anyhow, because uh, tying square knots in the laces out in the field and having to deal with all that is just really a pain. <laughs> it can be done, <laughs> but it is a pain. Anyhow, that's the story of boot laces.
So, the other day we went traveling about, and in fact, uh, went down to uh, to one of the old areas where we used to live, me and my wife, and uh, did a little antique shopping. And lo and behold, I ran into two razors that I had been trying to get my hands on uh, at an antique store. One was a Schick injector adjustable. Yes, the in, the adjustable Schick injector. Now, the reason that I had wanted one so badly is because, well, that's what my dad used for years and years and years. And in fact, when he passed away, um, it it had disappeared. The last time I was, I was there, uh, he had it in his bathroom. And then when he passed away and I went back up for that, um, yeah, it had vanished. Oh, well. Anyhow, I had always wanted one. I, I was curious. I wanted to find out what all the big hoopla was. And, well, now I have one. So now I can, uh, now I can try it out. And now I can, uh, see what all the, uh, uproar is about, or at least what it was about back in the day. Now, the other one that I found that, uh, was in good shape, I found a gold, um, gem shovel head. Now, I have a shovel head, but it's silver, and it is in beautiful shape. However, the clip that holds it closed and also has the integral blade holder or tensioner uh, in place is missing, which means that the blade kind of rattles around inside the, uh, the, the head of the razor unless I uh, put something in there. And if I put something in there, then I can't really rinse the razor off, and it's while well, it looks good, it's just not practical to ever use. Well, now I have a gold one. And uh, the gold one has all its parts and pieces. And man, you want to talk about looking forward to using that thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like that. So looking forward to using that, but it is amazing. Now, I also, <laughs> geez, there was one antique store that I went into that had a straight razor, a couple of straight razors. And I pulled the straight razor out of its scales and looked at it. It looked like a comb. I mean, why would anybody even sell something like that? Um, yeah, it was so beat that it literally, there were chunks taken out of that blade to the point where the thing looked like a comb. Uh, yeah, it was rough, ragged. I mean, jeez. You know, I don't know if somebody was selling it for the scales, if that what they were thinking, or maybe just a decorative device, you know, to kind of put up in your bathroom or something, but... My gosh, if you're going to have a straight razor, at least get one that, well, could potentially work. Oh, well. <laughs> anyhow, <clears throat> anyhow, it was fun. Uh, the reason that I was down there was uh, I went to uh, a DCI, which is a drum and bugle corps uh, organization. I went to uh, one of their competitions called Crown Beat, and... Uh, yeah, they had a bunch of uh they, they had some some DCI open and some DCI world class uh drum and bugle corps that uh, that were there competing and oh my gosh. Now, the funny thing is is that I I I got it as a gift for someone and then the someone that I bought it for <laughs> had to be somewhere else. Oh well. But <laughs> The fun thing was is that me and my wife went down there, got to enjoy it, and well, really did. It was uh, it was phenomenal. It was like it was like being at a marching band concert, essentially. You know, it was it was really fun. And and I'm here to tell you, you know, I've I've got a a boy who is uh, really into marching and playing and that kind of activity and. The amount of work that goes into those events and those operations is just, well, phenomenal. And if you ever get a chance, or if you have a, uh, a person that you know, a, a young person in a, in a marching band somewhere, go out and support them. Go out and watch them. Uh, these kids put a lot of time and effort. Not only are they playing music, and they're playing it well, but they're also marching and acting and just... Yeah, they're they're typically the ones that in the uh, in the summer heat, while the uh, football team is in a weight room that happens to be air conditioned, these kids are out on a band field marching around and uh, soaking up the sun's rays, heat and humidity, and still doing it with a smile on their face. So if you get an opportunity, go out and give them some some support. And if you really want, if you like marching bands, 
Yeah, go out and de- go see a DCI competition. Holy cow. Uh, I was impressed. I, I was really impressed. There was, there was one, uh, one group that was there. And I sat there the, the, the whole time that they were playing and, and performing. And I was pretty much sitting there with my mouth open, just going, holy cow, my jaw was on the floor. It was, well, it was that amazing and that good. Anyhow, that's the kind of fun I've been having. And, you know, you go out and you go have fun and if you get an opportunity to go search for some razors in the wild. Go take that opportunity as well because, boy, that made for a great day. All right, let's give this a try. Let's talk about the, well, shaves of the day. Uh, If you haven't been paying attention, and it's okay, um, I've taken, well, a bit of time off. And it has been fabulous. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, just, you know, why? Okay, Um, I was getting stale. I was finding myself talking about the same products over and over again and essentially doing the same things and not really bringing anything new to the table. And when you're in a situation like that, you kind of think to yourself, Self, what are you doing here? And uh, I had a bunch of other stuff going on, which I have uh, accomplished. So good stuff there. And uh, I took some time off, to be quite honest. And it has been nice. Now, the reason that it has been nice is because I have been able to focus on, well, other things and quite honestly not think about um, what I was going to shave with. I just kind of went with my heart and soul and pulled products off the shelf and just, you know, out of the boxes and it just used what I wanted and it has been, well, kind of nice been able to go back and use some that I really like and reacquaint myself with others that I had, well, sort of kind of forgotten about in the in the, the muddle of things, if you will. So anyhow, the, the other thing that, and kind of the thing that started this, I guess, is, you know, when I decided to take a few days off, it was right around a, uh, a trip that I was going to take down to a place where I used to live. Went down to some antique shops and, uh, well, picked up a couple of razors that I had been uh, seeking for a while. And one of those razors was a Gillette injector, uh, Gillette, a Schick injector adjustable from the, I believe, 1970s. And I'd always wanted one, and so I went ahead and got it. Now, I have tried the, the uh, that adjustable on a three, on a five, on a seven setting, and here have been my observations. On a three, it's mild. It is, uh, call it Gillette flare tip blue, um, if you will, Gillette blue tip mild. Uh, it has been, you know, really mild. The, uh, the five, is uh, pretty close to what a five would be, um, you know, average setting, if you will, you know, fat boy five, if you will. Um, the seven, on the other hand, is just a little bit stronger, a little bit more. I had it on seven this morning. I did nick myself twice, and I was attempting to do it using no pressure um, when I when I was had it set on three, I, I will admit that uh, had to use a little bit of extra pressure to uh, to get things nice and nice and shaved and uh, you know not BBS, but uh, you know to the level of shave that I wanted. Now it gave, it gave a great shave, but you know you are uh, applying pressure when you can feel the two uh, edge hooks or edge bumps, the things that protect you from the edge of that single edge blade, when you can feel those in your cheek, yeah, you're probably using just a bit too much pressure. However, the the observation that I came up with is, you know, an adjustable like that, uh, sliding it down to a three or even an adjustable uh, double edge, sliding it down to its lowest setting will, could, 
let's let's I'm not going to say will let's let's use could could allow an easier transition from cartridge razors which require a bit of pressure to perform well uh, to go from those to uh, traditional shaving methods you know that may be the place where uh, where an adjustable razor set down to a uh, to a low setting is uh, is prudent um, anyhow the uh, the shave that I got with a three was a very nice shave. The uh, the shave that I got with a five was a very nice shave. Although the the blade was a little bit rough, and uh, I found that it gave me just a bit of razor burn. So I changed out the blades. Had another shave with a, at a five that was very very nice, and proceeded to crank that same blade up today to a seven and nick myself a couple of times but overall got a very very nice shave i mean you know not too bad at all i think i prefer a five um you know four five six somewhere in that neighborhood you know just to be uh cantankerous you know i may uh put it on a six and say okay there it is <laughs> but it's uh it it's a nice razor and i enjoy the handle of it it's a plastic handle with a metallic head and the head has some weight, some heft, and it seems, and I may be wrong, but it seems to have more heft than a similar um, Gillette injector with a plastic handle that I have. It just seems to feel, well, better. Uh, just a tad more, I don't know, I, to a certain extent I equate weight with luxuriousness, if you will, and and that's probably not appropriate but it just it feels better it feels right and i just enjoy it and so that has been the shave of the day today i i used some uh, some spike shaving cream and uh i happened to be working well with a new brush a new inexpensive brush at that and uh, we're playing around with it and uh, seeing what it will uh, what it will do. I'm not going to tell you what brush it is, not yet, anyhow. I, I will tell you that uh, <laughs> for the price point, yeah, it's a pretty dang good brush. Uh, I'm liking it, and uh, yeah. So I use some spike, uh, like, like I said, some spike shaving cream. Love that stuff. It's very uh, very wonderful feel to it kind of a medicated, uh, I don't know, it feels like a bit of a menthol thing going on, even though I doubt it is. There might be some menthol in it, but I doubt there's much. Um, but it's just, it's a wonderful smelling soap. It feels great. It performs beautifully. It lathers easily. Yeah, it's good stuff. Anyhow, I went out and uh, bought myself some, some Spike aftershave and huh, very clean very summery, very light. It is an excellent summer aftershave, in my opinion. Um, yeah, because it is. It's clean, it's light, it's refreshing. It's uh, I enjoy it. I really do. Anyhow, that was the shave of the day today. And uh, yeah, there you go. So one of the things that I need to talk about is the Spike Aftershave. Okay, so I have been using Spike Aftershave this week, and along with uh, the luxurious Spike Shaving Cream uh, that comes in a tube that I really, really like. Um, but the Spike Aftershave, okay, so... Uh, putting it on, it's got a very clean, uh, light feel to it. It's alcohol-based, um, but a kind of a clean scent, a, uh, you know, just really refreshing and nice, very summery. And I really, really enjoy that. The problem that I have with it is that that scent lasts about eh, maybe 10 minutes, at least on me. Um, after about 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, where'd it go? You know, it was, it was here. What, what happened? Uh, yeah, it is not a long lasting scent. Um, again, feels great, feels clean, does the job, very refreshing. I really, really like it, but 
it just has no longevity. I mean, realistically, if I would, if if I had my druthers, um, between something like Spike and say, oh, I don't know, fine uh, American blend, I'd take fine all day long because I can smell it. You know, to uh, to a certain extent, the the Spike reminds me of the. Uh, of the CVS or Dollar General brand of the Old Spice clone that is all alcohol and then just, you know, after about 15-20 minutes there is no scent left at all. And it's very similar to that. And so I was, yeah, I'll say it, I was disappointed. You know, I was looking for that clean scent to, well, stick with me just a little bit didn't seem to want to hang around. It seemed to have something better to do, apparently, than, uh, you know, stay with me. So uh, I don't know where it's off and running, but I hope it's having a good time. Because, uh, well, you know, for me, it's just an ordinary day, like I didn't put on any aftershave. Yeah. Anyhow, I thought I'd tell you about that because, well, you know, I've seen a lot of people use Spike and Spike aftershave. And, again, I love, oh, good gosh, I love the shaving cream. I'm disappointed in the aftershave. Uh, I won't buy it again and, quite honestly, feel just a tad disgruntled about the fact that I spent what I did on it. If I'd have spent half the price, well, okay, maybe. And I, we're not talking big bucks here, so please don't misunderstand. It's just from a valuation standpoint... Um, it, to me, it's just not really there. But, oh well. To each his own, and for those of you that have Spike and that it lasts and, and, uh, you enjoy it, I'm jealous. <laughs> I truly am. Cause while it was here, while it was, you know, just like hanging around, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot too. So it is officially hot. I believe today it's actually coming up into the triple digits. Uh, if not, it's just shy of it. Yeah, it is 99 degrees in the truck driving home from work today. Wow. Yeah, so it's hot. And if you, uh, if you happen to be outside working, playing, doing whatever, uh, drink plenty of water. Um, hydration will help you uh, in more ways than one. First off, it's just, you know, uh, keeps you hydrated. It also helps your body cool down. Now, I must admit, uh, after my stint up at scout camp, I fully understand if you're outside and you get to the point where you're just absolutely uh, tired of drinking water. But it does help a lot. And... On that note, I must tell you about the uh, the new uh, tumbler that I have. Stainless steel tumbler, tumbler um, vacuum insulated, holds 32 ounces, has a big, thick plastic top um, that has an O-ring seal around it. And you would think by the description that, yes, in fact, I have a Yeti tumbler. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Okay, um, after a little bit of research and a little bit of YouTube viewing, I do like YouTube. There is so much information that you can get on YouTube if you just, well, look. Anyhow, there was a, uh, a couple of tests, a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons between the Yeti tumbler, stainless steel, double insulated, and the Ozark now, Ozark brand is sold at Walmart. The Yeti tumbler of this size cost, uh, what, $45? The Ozark tumbler, $9.95. So, call it $10. Um, this thing is fantastic. Holy cow. So, you know, the other day I was out here and, and uh, working in the garage, and it was hot. You know, I believe it was triple digits that day as well. And I had some iced tea in it. Now, I had filled the thing about halfway up with ice and poured iced tea in it. And I was enjoying cool beverages, the, uh, you know, the, the, the sip of a cool beverage, basically the whole time I was outside and out in the garage doing stuff. So, you know, good long time. I then went inside, filled it back up again with iced tea, 
and uh, proceeded to uh, sit around uh, that evening and uh, watch a couple of movies. Me and my uh, wife have been binge-watching Game of Thrones, at least the DVD sets that we have, just, well, because we enjoy the show. Uh, don't have HBO. Enjoy the show. So um, I'm kind of mad that it's going to take so long for this last season that just got over to actually, you know, come out on DVD or Blu-ray. Anyhow, I digress. I do that often, but that's okay. Um so went up to bed, came down the next morning. Now it has been sitting there, had, you know, two cups of iced or two big old things of iced tea in it, you know, the ice was about half full. There was water in it. And when I reached up to take it into the uh kitchen to clean it out, um I shook it. And I heard the rattle of a few ice cubes still left in the bottom of this thing. Now that is an unfamiliar sound first thing in the morning at my house uh, because while we have had, you know, double insulated coffee cups and things like that around, I've never had one that keeps ice that long. Uh, now, as far as maintaining hot drinks, so I made a cup of coffee. Well, actually, I made a bunch of coffee. Um, I... I Essentially, I ground up some uh, some Guatemalan that I had roasted uh, this weekend, ground it up and threw it in the French press, and uh, proceeded to pour the water on there, and uh, and then once it was done, put it in my in my cup here. Now I will admit that I had rinsed out my cup with warm water, which preheated it just a little bit, kind of took the chill off. Uh, but I poured my cup of coffee, and it filled it probably three-quarters of the way full, and put the cap on, went out to the truck, and as I was driving down the road, attempted to drink out of the silly thing, and it is so blasted hot that I, well, couldn't. Took the lid off and let it sit open, steaming, for probably about another ten minutes, before I attempted it again, and lo and behold, it was still hot, but not quite up to the scalding level. And uh, just absolutely amazing. Take it into work, and it's good and hot until, oh, 10 o'clock. By the time I finish it, and, uh, you know, from the first sip all the way to the last sip, it's nice and hot and warm and just, yeah, good stuff. And for 10 bucks. How can you go wrong? Now, it is a little difficult, at least in my area, to find them. I have, let's see, within probably a 15-mile radius, I have about, uh, well, I have three Walmarts. Went to the first one? Nope, we're out of them. And uh, not only were they out of them, but yes, that's very popular, and the shelf is bare. <laughs> Went to the second one. Nope, we're out of them too. Now, the second one is a huge Walmart. Uh, it has just been opened up, uh, well, not too long ago, maybe three years, four years ago. And it is a monster store. It was out. So then finally, I went to the smallest of all three of the Walmarts, which is the one that is closest to the home. And it's okay, because I was out and about doing stuff anyhow, and I just happened to go past these other ones and figured I'd stop in and see. Well, I wasn't looking looking uh, to score one of these uh, big old tumblers just because of my experience in the last two stores, but I went in anyhow just to check it out and uh, asked a lady, and I said, hey, do you, uh, do you happen to have any of these? And she said, hold on a minute, let me check. And so she checked, and she said, I've got them somewhere. They're just not out here. We went to the shelf. It, too, was bare. She said, are you going to be here for a while? I said, yeah, I'll be here for a couple more minutes. She said, well, hang out in this area, and I'll be back in a minute. Let me go check in the back. She went and checked in the back, and lo and behold, they had about a 100 of them in boxes that uh, had just come in, and she had to put them out on the shelf anyhow. So I said, no, nah, I'll take two. <laughs> Gave one to my wife, one for me, and then proceeded to tell uh, this lady, her manager, and then do a survey on Walmart that the service that she provided was absolutely outstanding, and it was exactly the kind of service that I greatly appreciate, because it happens, well, less and less nowadays, 
And so just like I brag on our vendors within the wet shaving community, I also brag on, well, even people that stock uh, shelves at Walmart if they're doing a good job. So uh, anyhow, yeah, I came home and uh, had the tumbler and, uh, oh, I have been, it's been uh, with me the whole time. Now, I will admit, it will give your arm a workout because it is uh, just a tad heavy. And uh, when you fill it up with liquids and ice, um, it gets a tad heavier. But uh, all in all, yeah, good stuff. So if you're looking for a good tumbler, don't want to spend the money on a Yeti or a, what is it, an Arctic? I think Arctic makes uh, makes tumblers as well. The uh, the size and shape of this Ozark is I- almost identical. The The one that I saw tested on YouTube, I think it weighed like an ounce or an ounce and a half more than the Yeti. But other than that, it's the same size, it's the same shape. It could have been made in the exact same factory. But, uh, yeah, and on the YouTube videos, it actually shows holding ice just uh, like 15 minutes longer than the Yeti. But they're both uh, like super, super uh, mugs, tumblers. So anyhow, if you'd like to have a Yeti-type uh, tumbler and have some uh, some extra dollars to, uh, well, spend on shave gear, uh, this is a good way to do it. Anyhow, there's my quick review of an Ozark tumbler, and yes, I'm loving it. Well, that concludes this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have some suggestions or would like a topic covered, drop me an email at brushandsoapandblade at gmail.com or give me a call at 864-372-6234 or contact us on Twitter at Brush and Blade. You can also visit us at our blog, brushandsoapandblade.wordpress.com. As always, we're available on iTunes and Stitcher. 